Hello everyone, welcome to Schneider Electric PLC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PLC program. In this presentation, in this lesson, we are going to learn the different data storage formats in PLCs as well as the memory area in PLCs. So we are going to begin with the data storage formats in PLCs. All PLC store information in different formats called data types and they include elementary data types which are also called basic or primary data types, generic data types that are general indicators for class of data types, derived data types. So we use derived data types to define more advanced and complex data type to save programming time and to obtain a better program structure. These data types are also called the user-defined data types. Okay, so we are going to look at these in more details when we start to build applications that will demand the use of them in order to optimize our application. Now, how does a digital or a PLC system represent information? They do it in the form of a bit. A bit, which is actually a binary digit, is the smallest unit of information in any digital system. A bit can either be a zero for false or not true or a one for true. Now, let's look at a a light switch scenario as an example of a binary bit system which has only two states and can be turned on or off the light switch determines whether the light is on or off and this value can be stored in a single bit by the computer the digital value of the light switch provides an answer to the question is the light turned on if the light is turned on which is a true then its value is one otherwise its value is zero and if the light is turned off or if the light is not turned on which is a false then its value is zero otherwise its value is is one so in a PLC system this information will be stored in a form of a bit and this bit is actually a memory location and this memory location must be able to be accessed by programming and we do that with the help of variables. A variable is the name assigned to a specific memory address and according to the IEC standard all address to be used must be declared in the form of a, a variable. You should note that when declaring a variable the data type must be declared at the same time and still in this standard guidelines on how to declare variables and data types as well as their value ranges have been defined. Now looking at the bigger looking at the bigger picture of things is an identifier or identifiers. Identifiers are used to name different elements in the language. We are talking about the IEC 61131-3 languages. And these identifiers include variables, user-defined data types, function, function blocks, and program. So we are going to explore all of these okay, during our programming sessions. The rules governing the naming of identifiers are as follows. First, the name can contain characters, digits, and an underscore. And the characters that we are talking about here are letters of the alphabet. The only special character is the underscore character. The first character cannot be a digit, but rather the first character should be an alphabet or an underscore. You should also know that they are not case sensitive and two underlying characters or the underscore cannot occur together nevertheless we can enhance this functionality by using the extended option like for those using the unity pro environment you will go to tools program setting variables character set dialog and you choose the extended option most of the time by default it is set to the standard option there should be no embedded space within the name Next, the first six characters should be unique, that is, no two names should have an identical string in the first six characters. 
the name should not contain keywords. So this is an example of some meaningful names that you can use, like limit, sensor one, pump, valve up, and so on. And these are some invalid names, like five CB, like inch. Inch is a special keyword. You can use it. R, S E hash. That is less hash. Names does not accept the hash symbol. And keywords like true, false, if, then, else, if, else, and if, and so on, cannot be used as an identifier. Otherwise, the system will generate a bug. It's going to refuse to accept it as an identifier. So let's look at the data types in PLCs. Depending on the tax performed by the PLC, many different data types can be, can be used. And they include we have boolean variables which are associated with data inputs or outputs we have various types of integers like the double integer which is d int on sign integer it is u int and sign integers which is just int and so on floating point objects which can be real or long real so we are going to look at that in more depth in the upcoming slides types used for time management so we may want to declare a variable or identifier as a time especially for time triggering events so we want to use time data type and modern PS system must possess a variety of data types most modern PS system possess a variety of data types the IEC standard recognize the need and provide a wide variety of data types some of these data types supported by PLCs are they are either elementary derive or generic so we are going to focus more on the elementary data types which can be integer used for counters and ids real or floating points for arithmetic calculations time duration and time and date for timers and time triggered functions strings for text information processing bit string for low level device operation and boolean for logic operations each basic data type has several sub types defined in the standard which will be briefly described subsequently so we are going to start first with integers integer data types are usually used to represent parameters that cannot assume decimal values such as counts the unsigned integer representation can be used in situations where negative values are not expected while signed integers can be both positive and negative values and for the same number of bits used, unsigned integer can assume a wider range than signed integer. So the table below clearly summarizes these. For signed integer, we can have different types like short integer, which has 8 bits, integer, which has 16 bits, double integer, which has 32 bits, and long integer, which has 64 bits. And you can clearly see that they are signed integer and they have different values. And depending on your application, you want to choose the, the type. Depending on how large your value can grow, you want to choose a type. And they all have zeros as default values. While for positive integer, that is unsigned integer, they still have the same number of precision, like for the unsigned short, still 8 bits, unsigned long. 64 bits worth what changes is the range of values and support so you can clearly see that for positive or unsigned integer we have just the positive range of numbers and they also have zero as default values what are the use case of integers so we can use integers to represent count for example if you have a count which cannot go more than 100, then the short integer is sufficient. When large positive and negative numbers are expected, in the case of position encoder, a long integer of long inch type B can be used. Examples of integer literals are shown below. Now, this table demonstrates how you can represent information. Or how you can represent an integer you can either represent it in decimal in binary in octal or in hex and these are the different formats 
Then decimal, we have decimal zero, this is binary zero, eight bits, binary uh, octal zero, and this is hexadecimal zero, eight bits. 37, 37, binary, 37, octal, and 37, hexadecimal, and so on. Negative 14, binary, so here you can see it has two representation. Negative 14 being a negative two hash and the string is a binary and positive two hash. So here we have just converted the negative number to its positive equivalent using two complements. Okay, so well, we are not going to go into the digital electronic of things, but you should know that we can represent negative numbers as positive numbers using two complements. And to enhance readability, we can represent numbers like this. Like, for example, 12,534 can be 12-534. And we can write strings of 16 bits binary into 8 separate bits separated by the underscore. Okay. And the system still accepts, still accepts that. All right, now the real second is the real or floating point numbers. There are two types of real or floating point numbers, and they are single position, which is a real, and double position, which is a long real. The single position can take 64, sorry, six, uh, 32 bits, and double position takes 64 bits. They all have 0, 0.0 as a default value, and you can clearly see that. The range of double position is far, far higher than the range of single position, the range of values they can accommodate. These data types are useful for representing very small to very large numbers, and you can use both positive and negative values. Also, analog values of sensors and tachometers are usually represented using the real or floating point numbers. They are also used in closed loop control and analog output for driving position control. So you should note that the real literals are used to represent constant values of very large and small numbers u and small numbers. So you can as well use decimal notations or exponentiation to represent them. Like for example, the number 0 0.43 times 10 to the minus 23 can be written as 0 0.43 e negative 21 and the number negative 0 0.1254 times 10 to the positive 17 can be written as minus 0 0.1254 e 17. Okay guys, that will be it for this presentation. And uh, please visit our site at www.espalenizon.com to get uh, expanded knowledge on uh, data types. So there we have explained the different data types like the uh, uh, structured data type, like the struct data type, like the enumerated data type, which are all uh, derived data types, as well as some examples, situation. And uh, you can get the full stack information on uh, data types and their definition when you head on to our site. And there you will get detailed access to some explicit engineering knowledge you will need for the upcoming uh, training. So thank you for watching and uh, please, if you find this video helpful, do like, uh, share and uh, subscribe. So see you in the next video.